And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for August 19th. Genevieve peaked earlier as a Category 4 hurricane. It's now down slightly on our estimates, down to 125 miles per hour on the latest. Satellite estimates from Force 13. National Hurricane Center will have an update pretty much as this goes out. Higos has also made landfall in China as a Category 1 typhoon, just passing Macau and Hong Kong. In the Atlantic, we have two areas of interest, both with moderate to high chances of development there. Uh, 98L, the one on the right-hand side, has the highest chance. There's Genevieve, ex Fausto, still active as well, and a 10% area uh, that could develop into a weak tropical cyclone in the next seven days. In the Western Pacific, Higos just about starting to move inland now. Landfall was an hour or two ago. Uh, and a 40% chance now for an area in the Philippine Sea that could gather some momentum as it approaches the Ryukyu Islands. No systems active though in the Indian Ocean at this point. It's all quiet here. So let's take a look at Genevieve. We've got it at 125 miles per hour, pressure of 949 millibars. It's currently located at 19.2 north, 109 west. That's 265 miles east southeast of Predavayata. Uh, likely to move towards the northwest, could still significantly impact the uh, southern tip of the Baja California Peninsula, but it will start to weaken, maybe quicker than what's being shown on this graphic. Uh, this is probably a worst case scenario, I would imagine and still saying by the uh, f fifth day there that it will be gone. Here's the National Hurricane Center's graphic showing the uh, wind probabilities for tropical storm conditions. The yellow zone there is 30% or higher. The greens uh, start at 5%, up to 30% incrementally. And this is the current wind field and the warnings. A uh, tropical storm warning for Los Barriles to Pedro Cortes and a tropical storm watch for Los Barriles to La Paz and uh, Credo Cortez to Cabo San Lazaro in Mexico. All of those along the Baja California Peninsula. North Atlantic looking like this on the satellite imagery. You can see on the very right hand side of the image there a massive blow up over Africa as well from the next tropical wave. Uh, 98L in a bit of a predicament because it's sort of two systems in one really when you look at that. ASCAT earlier today found 40 knot winds in the one on the right hand side. Um, so that's interesting to see and this is the Gulf of Mexico right now not much going on here at this point the East Pacific then quite obviously you can see uh, the hurricane Genevieve of course uh, starting to turn a little bit more towards the north in those later frames by the looks of things on the satellite imagery you can still see what's left of Fausto over there on the left hand side as well uh, not much left of it at all but it is still quite traceable so that's something in the western pacific, uh, Higos didn't have a visible eye, but it has made landfall with a radar eye and wind speeds possibly up towards 90 miles per hour. We've given it 75 miles per hour for the time being until we can reassess uh, the uh, observations. And a very broad area of interest there just off Samar in the Philippines, which could become our next tropical cyclone. The South Pacific fairly quiet, just a few thunderstorms blowing up around the Solomon Islands, not much going on over land areas. Um, and a trough there down towards Fiji and Tonga. The Indian Ocean looking uh, somewhat quiet as well. India getting a little bit of monsoonal rain, uh, quite a lot of it off the coast there in the northern Bay of Bengal, but nothing of a tropical cyclonic nature. So let's take a look at sea surface temperatures. Still waning quite a bit in the central part of the eastern Pacific there, but in the, uh, on the right-hand side, sea surface temperatures remain warm for a little while yet for Genevieve, but they are starting to cool off a little bit already. And the storm's starting to show signs of being affected by that. The Gulf of Mexico really warm, 30 degrees plus, and off the western coast of Florida as well. And the Caribbean rather warm, especially towards the northwest. We're watching these areas in particular for these two invests, which could affect both of those areas. The Indian Ocean, um, not too much to say about this compared to yesterday. It's about exactly the same, really. And no storms are going to form here, so it's not particularly relevant. And in the Western Pacific, we've still got warm waters abound, 30 degrees plus over large swathes and tracts of the Western Pacific Ocean with the warmest waters just off the southern part of Japan, believe it or not, getting up nearly towards 32 degrees there in one or two spots. Temperatures tempered a little bit by Typhoon Higos in the South China Sea. 
Latest sea surface temperature anomalies just show how how much above average they are off the southern coast of Japan. Very warm, 3, maybe even 4 degrees above average. The Atlantic Ocean also significantly above average north of Bermuda, which is interesting for the subtropics, but in general both of these basins are a little bit above par for the course, and the Atlantic has a much higher heat um, potential. So here's Hurricane Genevieve, and you can take a look at the latest imagery live on our satellite feed on our YouTube channel. It's a live stream showing wall-to-wall -wall coverage of Genevieve's satellite imagery. Uh, there it is then, moving towards the northwest, perhaps a little bit more of a northward motion, as I mentioned there in the last few frames. Hard to tell whether it's just a wobble or not. Uh, so if you're on Baja California, sir, watch very closely every little movement from this storm, because much too far to the north and it could deliver tropical main um high-end tropical storm force winds maybe even hurricane force gusts or winds when it arrives at the moment we're looking at the storm passing as a category two maybe a category three at worst although if it does start to disintegrate quickly there is a small chance that it could disintegrate and be much weaker by the time it reaches the peninsula so let's keep our fingers crossed for that so looking at the models then, uh, some of them don't think that Genevieve has peaked yet, but I think it's pretty clear that it probably has. Uh, and then the slide down there is a rather gradual one. Wind shear will start to rise around now. Um, still in the low range, 5 to 10 knots, maybe 10 to 15, and will stay low for most of the duration. Sea surface temperatures are taking a tumble, as you can see on the top right-hand panel. Relative humidity falling off its peak, and the track forecast is pretty clear-cut. So let's take a look now at one of the invests. I'm not sure which one this is. I think it's 97L. Um, and you can see the GFS though is the only one that we've got right now along with some statistical models calling for a minimal tropical storm. Uh, wind shear will remain fairly low, five to 10 to 15 knots maybe. Sea surface temperatures warm all the way through. I don't think it will be doing that dip down towards uh, Panama. It'll probably be more of a straight track towards the west. Um, however, it's interesting the reasons behind that, which we don't have enough time to get into, it will end up going towards the Yucatan. Uh, this is for Invest 98L2, um, and you can see the models a little bit more confident on this one. We've got a few more models on there as well. Wind shear is going to remain fairly low, one or two suggesting it could get towards hurricane status towards day five. Uh, wind shear low to moderate, as I said there. Sea surface temperatures will start to rise through the roof once it reaches the uh, Lesser Antilles. Relative humidity is looking good to average, and the storm will end up, if it does become a storm, pretty much in the same place that Isaias found itself. So. We'll see where it goes from there. On August 19th, 1991, Hurricane Bob was peaking as a Category 3 off the US East Coast. If you thought Isaias was something big, Bob was bigger. There it is on the satellite imagery. We also had Tropical Storm Gladys in the Western Pacific, which would become a typhoon in about a day or two as it moved past the southernmost Japanese main islands and into the East China Sea. That was all that was active on this day in 1991. Back to today then, and in the Atlantic, the next name on the list is Laura, followed by Marco, maybe both in the next week. In the Eastern Pacific, the next name is Hernan, followed by Izel, and in the Central Pacific, the next name on list one is Hone. In the West Pack, we're looking out now for uh, Bavi, that's the next name on the list, followed by Mesak, and I think we all remember the last time we had Mesak. In the North Indian Ocean, the next name on list one is Gatti, and there's the Southern Hemisphere names when they start up in a few weeks or months. We'll have another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow, I think. It just won't be me, because I'm away for two nights now, and fingers crossed we'll have that. We'll see you then. Check out our new look cyclone tracker on the Force 13 website for the latest up-to-date information. You can also find us, of course, on our YouTube channel, search Force 13, and also on Facebook and Twitter, Force 13 at Force 13 on Twitter for the latest updates. You can also help the project become even better by becoming an Ultimate Fan on YouTube. To see the full list of Ultimate Fan benefits and to join, visit youtube.com forward slash force 13 slash join. With a special thanks to our top supporters this month. 
You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force 13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.